in this chapter, we will look at different ways to make a selection. If I wanted to brighten up a sky in a landscape and leave the rest of the image untouched, I need a way to select the sky. In this lecture, we will look at the rectangle and ellipse select tool. I will create a new document and make it 800 by 500 pixels. I click on the rectangle tool at the top or I can press M. To draw a selection, I drag over the canvas. You can recognize a selection because of the marching ends, as they are called. The marching ends define the border of the selection. Everything that is inside the selection is selected, and everything that is outside the selection is not selected. So now that we have a selection, what can we do with it? Let's open Levels by going to Colors, Levels, or by pressing Ctrl L. If I now drag the white output slider to the left, only the pixels inside the selection will be darkened. The pixels outside the selection are unaffected. I will click on Cancel. To stop the selection, I go to Select None, or I can press Ctrl D. The marching ends are gone, and there is no selection anymore. Let's explore the rectangle tool a bit further. I drag a selection again. I can now change the size of the selection by dragging at the sides or by dragging at the corners. If I want rounded corners, in the tool options I can click on rounded corners. With radius I determine the size of the rounded corners. I will press Ctrl D to deselect. Now let's have a look at the ellipse select tool which is at the bottom left of the toolbar. I click on it and drag an ellipse. Here I can also change its size by dragging at the sides and at the corners. I press Ctrl D to deselect. To draw a circle, first I drag and then I add the shift key. I will keep the shift key pressed down and when I'm finished dragging, I first release the mouse button and then release the shift key. This works the same for the rectangle tool. I press Ctrl D to deselect and click on the rectangle tool. I drag and then press the shift key to get a square. Then I release my mouse, and after releasing the mouse, I release the shift key. I can also move my selection by dragging inside the selection. Clicking inside the selection without moving is the same as pressing enter. It will turn the adjustable selection into a normal selection. A normal selection can't be adjusted by dragging at the sides or the corners. However, when I click inside the selection again with the rectangle or ellipse select tool, I will be able to drag the sides and corners again. If I have a selection and press shift at the right side of the cursor, I will see a small plus sign appearing. By holding down SHIFT, I can add another selection. I can move the additional selection independent of the other selection. If I want to merge the two selections together, I can drag my new selection over the first selection. 
I can do some last adjustments to it and then press enter. Now the selections have merged to a single selection. I can also subtract from the selection. If I press CTRL at the right of the cursor I see a small minus sign appearing. With CTRL pressed down I drag a new selection. I can drag the new selection over the existing selection. I can make some last adjustments and press enter. Now I have subtracted from the selection. I can also make an intersection. Let's use the ellipse select tool for this. I will now press shift plus control and drag over the existing selection. I can make some last adjustments and press enter. I have now made an intersection of the two selections. I can undo selection changes by pressing Ctrl Z. And in the history panel we can see each selection change is a separate state. Now we have seen how to create different shapes with selections. In the next lecture we will look at the free select tool.